In this episode, we'll take this a little differently. Instead of doing a full 40-minute review of the Zoom H4 Essential, which we are recording this entire episode with, this is going to be more of a summary. We'll have a written summary at the end that goes into some of the details on some of the testing we did. But let me just give you some background. First of all, I bought this with my own money. Zoom has nothing to do with this review. They didn't send me anything. Uh, the only sponsor of this is me. I am the one that's sponsoring this and we do have some online courses. If you'd like to learn how to make better sound or lighting for your videos, go ahead and check those out. The link is in the description. Now, I've spent 15 years of my career as a product manager, and the thing that people do when they design products, that companies do when they design products, is they identify who the product is for. There's no such thing as a product that is perfect for everybody. And that's certainly true of the H4 Essential. And let me just kind of identify what who I think Zoom is aiming for. It's probably their best selling product ever in terms of the entire Zoom H4 line. Started, I got my very first H4 in 2007. The company I was working for at the time bought it for me. Then they came out with the H4N. Then there's the H4N Pro. I think there's a black edition in there somewhere as well. And now it's the H4 Essential. So since... Uh, a couple decades now, they've been making this product. At the time it came out, it was incredibly innovative from the standpoint that it was reasonably priced. You got two XLR inputs, plus you had stereo microphones built in, but it has always struggled in terms of producing clean audio. <laughs> the preamps have never been that great in the H4, and the H4 Essential, it's better than the original H4, but it is not amazing. And let me kind of, we'll get there. Again, it's a $199 product. It's made for people that are on a tight budget, first of all, who not, are not going to spend, you know, closer to $1,000 or even over $1,000 on an audio recorder, period. It's made for that. That's the first thing. Secondly, I think it's a good fit for someone who's getting started in video or in sound recording of some sort. And yeah, for someone getting started. I think for me, it was a good product to get started with. I quickly realized, oh, there's some limitations here that don't work great for me, but... It's also good if for people that want a single device that can do location sound effects and ambient recording, plus also be able to plug in XLR microphones. So when you're doing a talking head video or an interview or something like that, you can have a boom mic and plug that into the XLR inputs on here. So that's, that's what they're aiming for. It's simple to use. It's for people that don't necessarily have a big background in recording audio. Um, there's no need to set the input level or gain on this, especially this new device. The previous versions you had to on this one, you don't have to. But that means that you will have a post-production workflow. You have to adjust the levels in post-production, most likely. So those are those are kind of the things that I think when they were designing this product, that was the persona they had in mind. People that fit that profile, if you will. Does it serve this persona well? It's okay. It's mostly, I would say... Honestly, if I were spending my money, I'd probably look at the Tascam Porta Capture recorders instead. They're a little bit better in terms of their uh, preamplifier quality, in terms of especially the self noise generated by the preamplifier. So let me let me just give some examples here. So first of all, the built-in microphones generate plenty of self noise. So if you want pristine, hiss-free recordings, this is not it. This is not it. The XLR inputs require you to do post-processing on pretty much every recording because you don't set your input level. Whatever level you get is what you get. And then you either have to pull it down if it got above zero dB or you need to boost it up if it was not loud enough. So you are going to probably need to do some post-production. That's fine if that's part of your workflow. For mics with lower output levels, this is, this is gonna be things like the dynamic microphones, Shure SM7B, Shure SM58, any other dynamic microphone you're going to need to boost quite a lot in post. Uh, a lot of mine came in with tons of headroom. I, that is to say, I had to boost them by let's say, over 20 dB to get them to a reasonable level. When you do that, the noise floor comes up too, and that's where you'll start to see that these preamplifiers, they're better than the first generation H4. They're maybe a little bit better than the H4N, but they're not great. So if you use those kind of dynamic microphones, you're probably still going to need an inline preamplifier like a cloud lifter or a fat head, if that's your workflow. If you use a very clean microphone like the Rode NT1, this is the Rode NT1 signature series. It has a 
specification of self noise of 4 dB A weighted, one of the cleanest microphones, condenser microphones, certainly on the market. You can get great recordings with this. That's what you're hearing this entire time. I'm recording with this microphone into the H4 Essential. So, can get great results that way. The 32 bit float works fine here. So, if you go over 0 dB, you can pull it down in post and it will it will capture that. That's fine. As long as you don't distort the, at the microphone. In other words, if you don't try to record a sound source that's so loud, a jet engine, or stick a microphone in the engine compartment on a performance vehicle, then you're probably going to be fine. I found that to get clean results, you almost always have to use a high pass filter, sometimes called a low cut filter, same thing, different names, at around 75 hertz and roll it off pretty aggressively. And the reason for that is that there just tends, for most microphones, you're going to get quite a bit of noise. That'll clean things up a little bit for most, most cases. So overall, do I recommend the H4 Essential? Yes and no. If you're just getting started in sound recording and you don't have a big budget and you want that all-in-one recorder, this is okay. Again, I started with the original H4. I learned a lot with it, and this could be a good way to learn a lot too. But you're going to outgrow it most likely. If you're a stickler for very clean recordings, I would recommend instead you look at the Zoom F3, the F6, or the F8N Pro or even a Sound Devices Mix Pre. Those are much more expensive, except for the Zoom F3. The Zoom F3 actually, at the time of this review, is on special. The pricing is $279. It's a tiny little recorder with two XLR inputs. If that's your main use case, you're going to be recording with the XLR inputs, with your own external microphones, then the F3, I would highly, highly recommend that instead of this. It does not have built-in stereo microphones, so if that's important for you, you're not going to get that with the F3, but... If you just need those XLR inputs, the F3 is a much better purchase than the H4 Essential or even the H6 Essential. All right, now you can hear a bunch of samples. We did a ton of testing. I'm going to go ahead and put a link down below where you can go listen to those original WAV files right out of the recorder. The only thing we've done to those files is normalize all of them to the same level so that when you play them back, you can hear them. You can hear the noise floor, all of that. Check the link below for that. So we're going to go ahead and stop there. We're going to have a written summary after I say goodbye. In the meantime, get out there, make some great sound, and we will talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.